Hey everyone, we're here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and this is Memorial Park Cemetery. Just to kind of give you a reference where we're at inside here, this is the chapel. So just kind of come a little ways over, and I wanted to show you um, a famous person here. And there's not much marking it, but some dead flowers, but uh, he's definitely a famous person if you're into country music. Um, which I'm not particularly a fan, but I know that there's a lot of people out there that do like country music. Um, and I also know that um, he's kind of like the, the, the big person when it comes to Western Swing. And in fact, people kind of consider him the founder of it or the co-founder of it. But he, he definitely has that title of King of Western Swing. And uh, I'm talking about Bob Wills and his place of burial is right here so it's pretty interesting like I said it's kind of come in about where this chapel is and this is uh, about Memorial and 51st in Tulsa where this cemetery is and it's a huge cemetery this is uh, James R. Wills I believe his middle name was Robert, but his nickname is Bob, and everybody knows him as Bob Wills. And in the middle it says, Deep within my heart lies a melody. And so the deal is, in 1913, he moved to Texas. His family did, and he started, that's why you see this fiddle there. He started learning how to play the fiddle. And so uh, he kind of came up with this style of music, Western Swing. And so uh, that's why they referred to him as the king of western swing so someone's visiting quite some time ago and you can see some dead flowers there this is his wife there and uh, he actually has two brothers in this cemetery um, that are part of it because it's Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys was his kind of group and the Texas Playboys one of them is buried right next to him Billy Jack Wills and he was his uh, brother and part of the original group uh, uh, there. He also has another brother in this cemetery. I'm not quite sure where he's at, but he was part of the Texas Playboys as well. Um, but if you, if you look and you really wanted to find him, you could find him in this cemetery. His other brother was a radio DJ as well, but they were all three part of that group. But there you have it, Memorial Park Cemetery, the King of Western Swing. And to me, that's pretty cool that you could uh, come up with a style of music um, that many people uh, enjoy still today. I'm showing you the section that Bob Wills is in, in case you want to come find it. He's right over there. So this chapel was built in 1946. And it just sort of uh, resembles an English cottage is what they were trying for. Like I said, right over there is where Bob Wills is at, not too far from this chapel. But I love the rock that's on here and the big old stained glass windows there. So right here on the other side of that chapel is section 11 of the American Legion. You can see a lot of these right here, but this monument here, this monument was erected to memorialize World War I soldiers and veterans, and it was erected by the American Legion, and uh, later it was dedicated to all veterans. But as you can see here, you can see many of them are Marine Corps, Navy and Army See all sorts in here. We're gonna take a closer peek at this monument over here. Then you can see the Top of that monument there, and there's flag flying it Has these cent sentries that are uh, On the sides of this monument, and this is a large monument Not for sure how tall it is, but I mean that's these sentries are probably about almost life size, I would say, to what a regular guy would be. But uh, you can see there's really nice stonework there. 
some stained glass. And uh, really nice the way that they've done this. Here they have a Vietnam War commemoration there. It is massive though. Looking up at that, seeing that sentry kind of look down and overlook and guard all of these soldiers here in this American Legion section. See the flag. And here are just some steps just leading up inside there. In memory of the illustrious men of Tulsa County who gave their lives for their country in the World War 1917 to 1918. And this was actually built or maybe even dedicated when they finished it. July 16th, 1927 is what it says there. And like I said, sun might get in there a little bit, but there's sentries on all four sides. Just keeping watch on everybody that's out in this little American Legion section. So this is Memorial Park Cemetery, and you might kind of notice this uh, Spanish style right here and uh, it was actually done on purpose and so when you look over here the Spanish style building this was about 160 acres that was purchased by C.W. Beck an oil man and it was purchased about six miles outside of the town of Tulsa and so his wife was actually from San Antonio so sort of got some inspiration from the Alamo I guess you could say and was kind of doing this in his in her honor but uh, what I wanted to show you right by this entrance which is right off of 51st Street right here in Tulsa and Memorial so you come in this 51st Street and you're gonna see this name right here Tisdale right to the immediate left of when you come in and Wayman Tisdale is his name. Um, you can see a picture of Wayman right there that they've kind of put in there. And uh, number 23, Wayman's smile was contagious. His quick wit and humor was infectious. A merry heart does good men does, does good like medicine. This is where Wayman Tisdale is buried. And you can see a basketball was placed there. So this is someone that, uh, if you're in Oklahoma, uh, you know who he is because he played for the University of Oklahoma. And you can kind of see they place colors there, kind of a crimson and cream. But uh, he ended up passing away from cancer. And uh, he played in the NBA as well. But uh, you, you always hear a lot of people talk good about him and uh, speak nothing but wonderful things. Like I said, this is right as you come in the entrance, right there. You can't miss him. Just a big name right as you come in. So uh, see if there's anything on the back side of this. Got a little bit telling about uh, when he was married down there. Get you a little bit of a close up there. Here's just another look at the front of this building. And you can kind of see some of the inspiration of how it's sort of a uh, San Antonio sort of look there. I mean, it's, it's, it's not exactly like the Alamo but you can kind of see with the entrance and then some of these roof tiles and everything of of kind of where this style came from it's it's definitely different uh, for this area it's it's not a typical style but you can see there's another building right there just to the left of that large building is this and I believe this is where the music comes from that I've been hearing. And I think there's like 20 pipes in there. 
And these pipes, they go off every hour, I believe. But you can hear this. This is a, you know, a massive cemetery, large. And you almost kind of have to know where you're going in here. Just now notice that the back side of that is kind of an old wooden door there, entrance to the little courtyard. But you almost have to know where you're going to look for somebody in here if you knew someone that was buried in here. But uh, they could definitely help you in the office. But you can see the pipes up there now. And this thing is really good size. And... Um, Cemetery's a little bit on a hill. You can see part of the city off in the distance, but it's kind of a hilly cemetery. You can see some of those pipes up in there. I thought we'd walk up in here and see if we could see anything looking straight up. Looking this way, on the outside, you can see some of that iron that's up there. And there's nothing that you can look up through here. I do see a hole there and a bunch of bird poo. So you can't really see anything. Some kind of access. You can see, get sort of an idea of how large this cemetery is. It goes a long ways down that hill. So they've got some screens up there to keep the birds out of course, but it looks like they're getting in there on one of the sides. I thought we might be able to see a close-up of the pipes, but I don't see it. You can see some of these, uh, I'm not sure who these uh, burials are right there, but uh, it's real pretty. They've got some stained glass and some of those as well. It's a, it's a well taken care of cemetery. And uh, anybody that lives in Tulsa is going to know where this is at and they know they've passed by it. I caught the tail end of those pipes just as I was leaving. I keep missing them. Tried to hang around for them. I know it happens, I guess, every half hour. I thought it was every hour. But it's actually about four minutes to the half hour, so maybe they run a little ahead of time. So I'm now in Section 45, Garden of Devotion. And it's just kind of on the back, far side of one, of the, one part of the cemetery. I can't give you much reference other than that because you, you, you start turning down through here and it twists and it turns, but you just go a little bit back from the road and that sign and you're going to see another famous person that's buried in this cemetery and here he is. It's actually husband and wife here, but it's Oral Roberts. Granville Oral Roberts. And I'm sure that's another relative right there, Ronald Robert Roberts. But, as you can see, there's a scripture on it. He was a famous televangelist. And, uh, he lived his life, it was a good life, and he, uh, didn't have all the scandals that a lot of other, uh, preachers and, and uh, Think men of that sort were having. Uh, there were no sex scandals, there were no money scandals and things of that nature, but uh, he didn't live a life without controversy. Um, shortly after his college days, he was famous for just having a tent outside and maybe having like 3,000 people that he would preach to, and they would be these healing uh, kind of sermons and, and stuff like that. So a lot of the stuff that he did um, was controversial and it was different. Um, he he's also has a university that has his namesake that's here in Oklahoma. It's Oral Roberts University. But uh, this is where he's buried. So one, one more famous person that you can come and pay your respects to. Um, just kind of out here, like I said, there's so many other graves. 
and so some of them you'll see i mean there's just so many like i said it's a well taken care of cemetery but with our recent rain some of these have been uh covered up with, with dirt and everything and you can see where they're actually trying to mark them better or something like that you'll see these flags or you'll see where they've brushed them off or dug them out and that's the caretakers of the cemetery but it's always interesting to me when i find these uh famous people that they're 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 just kind of i mean this is a, this is a nice marker don't get me wrong but it's not any more nice or flashier than the others and i'm okay with that you know he, he's a guy that lived a good life but it, it's interesting that all the influence that he had on pastors and with his university that there's not more of a marker here you know there's not more of a any kind of flowers left or something so i don't know maybe maybe it's just me but it's interesting how i go and i see these famous uh graves and there's really just nobody paying a visit to them other than maybe people like me that just like to come and see it or take photos or pictures or videos I'm not sure if you want to see it this is where you'd come so now i'm kind of towards the back of memorial park cemetery uh, maybe more specifically in front of the reflecting lake that's here uh, I'm going to show you the very last celebrity or famous person that I'm going to show you. And this, this one I remember big time from whenever I was a child. I um, saw a lot of him. But here in front of the reflecting lake, I'm in section 28, Garden of the Apostles. You can kind of see down that way there are some apostles, some statues of the apostles. But we're going to go just to the right over that way. You can kind of see over there is a reflecting lake and some mausoleums that sit around there. It's very pretty to look at. Each one of those, by the way, is a separate little uh, burial plot that you can have with your own little kind of sort of garden. Those are all over. Like I said, there's a lot of different styles out here, but we're going to walk this way. To show you the last celebrity that I'm going to show you. Um, there's a lot of famous people in this cemetery from athletes to other uh, evangelists, politicians and stuff like that, but this one to me, I'm going to end it on this one and this is huge. But this is the burial spot of Samuel Burrell Kinnison. And to me, this was huge. Uh, Sam Kinison, as most of you might know, um, you can kind of see some kind of comedy laughter faces there. And you can see a holy Bible. And it says at the top, in another time and place, he would have been called prophet. The story behind that is Sam grew up in a very religious household. He's not actually from Tulsa. He was actually uh, from Washington, the state. And there was a time period where he lived in kind of the same little, maybe bad area, I'm not sure, but where Richard Pryor lived for a time. But anyways, his uh, mother and father eventually divorced and she moved to Tulsa. When he reconnected with her, that's what brought him to Tulsa. And it's here that uh, he started getting into the religious thing, just like his father was. His father was actually a preacher. His mother, she came to Tulsa because she remarried a uh, religious man as well. And he was a preacher. So. He also had uh, two brothers, and uh, they were also ministers. So the story behind Sam is he was actually sent off to school, and it was a religious school, and uh, kind of sort of to shape him towards becoming a preacher. And what he ended up doing was uh, kind of running away, basically. But his roots, 
he kind of felt were here in Tulsa. He did eventually try to follow his uh, older brother's footsteps, which was big shoes to fill because they were uh, successful in their own means at evangelism. And uh, so that's what he did. He was actually, that's why that Bible's on there. He was actually a, a, a preacher, uh, an evangelist uh, for a while, and he did sermons and things of that nature. But he, he had such big shoes to follow with his father and his stepfather and his brothers that he really couldn't fill them. But he got into comedy, and that, that's kind of where I know I am. Uh, looking back on some HBO specials, um, looking back, he, he, he would do Saturday Night Live. He did um, a couple films, uh, like Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. I believe he was a professor in that. But he was known for yelling, and he would scream and stuff like that, and that was kind of part of his comedy act. He had kind of long hair and a beret. And but he would he would scream and just say no no, and that's what he was known for. And uh, he he had his own things that he battled, like much of us have in our lifetime. But he battled with uh, drugs and alcohol, and he was just sort of getting his life clean. And then he married his wife, and then he went off to Hawaii, and then came back home, and he was actually killed in a car crash. A 17-year-old was trying to switch lanes past somebody and swerved over and hit him and killed him. Um, but came back to his roots, what he considered his roots here in Oklahoma. And uh, as you can see, at least there's some flowers here. And this marker is kind of in the middle. So I'm assuming that this might be a relative. There's a scripture on there. Uh, it does say Dr. Austin Drew Marney. I don't know if that was a... Uh, grandfather stepfather I'm not really sure maybe some of you could do some research and uh, put a comment down below but as you can see here is another family member Kevin Earl Kinnison and July 7th 1959 to May 6th 1988 and it has a golf ball and a drum and it says playing up yonder and then you can see here Reverend Samuel Earl Kinnison 1909 to 1972 and of course you can see a holy bible on there and some praying hands and it's beloved husband and father but it it it's, it feels great that this last uh celebrity that i came to look at there's actually flowers left here and there and then a single rose right there uh behind sam kennison but like i said to me as a child just kind of watching comedy. I was really into comedy, and uh, it, it's great to see this uh, memorialized here, and that people remember him. And uh, but, anyways, just want to show you this the last one that I'll show you today. So there you have it. Here's the uh, apostles right in the center of this, and uh, like I said, there's all sorts of people buried in here tons of people some of them are prominent business owners in the Tulsa area and so uh, they're quite well known in the business world some of them are politicians some of them are professional baseball players professional football players uh, I believe there's a couple former governors in here of the state of Oklahoma but if you get a chance come out here and just kind of take in some of the, the beauty of this cemetery and uh, Pay your respects to some of these celebrities and uh, just take a look around. A lot of different styles out here. Thanks for watching, guys.